In our next discussion, we shall look at the method used to determine the length and size of set screws and cap screws. Let's begin, however, with a basic and important fact, which is this. Any threaded fastener must thread into its mating thread by at least the diameter of the thread, preferably one and a half times the thread diameter. By way of example, a 10 mm screw should be long enough to ensure that it screws into the mating threaded hole to a distance of between 10 and 15 mm. If the screw is too short, there is a high risk of the threads being stripped when we apply the tightening force to the fastener. There are two types of threaded holes, the first being open holes, also known as through holes, so named because the hole goes fully through the part. The other is called a blind hole, so called because we can't see through it. It is a drilling into a component, but not made all the way through. Let's, by the way of demonstration, decide what size and length of screws must be selected to secure the cover onto a hydraulic pump body which has blind holes. Regarding fastener size, we need to measure, as accurately as we can, the major diameter of one of the threaded or tapped holes. As near as we can assess, it is 10 millimeters. We are not sure yet about the thread type. So, let's move across to our thread chart, where we notice that a 10 mm fastener size could possibly be M10 metric, or 3 eighths of an inch in imperial. Trying to use our pitch gauge into such a small hole is not going to help us very much. We simply can't see. Our only alternative is to obtain some sample screws of metric 10 and 3 eighths of an inch imperial threads and physically try one at a time until we discover which thread fits. At this moment we need to explain that metric coarse and UN coarse threads are very similar. For example, look how close in size 10 millimeters is to 3 eighths of an inch and even closer is 8 millimeters to 5 sixteenths of an inch. If we compare the threads side by side, they too look virtually identical. But a close inspection shows that the pitches eventually do not align. Now, let's try the 3 eighths of an inch coarse screw. And, as you can see, it appears to fit quite well. Now we'll try the 10 millimeter metric coarse screw. And it too fits. So, which one is the correct fastener. To answer this, we look again at the thread chart. Here we go to metric 10 and to the comparative column and we see that 10 millimeters is actually larger than 3 eighths of an inch. Not much, but enough to realize that if the threaded hole were of the unified size, then a metric screw would be extremely tight. It follows, therefore, that because the metric screw does fit in our pump body, then the thread must be metric. This theory holds true for sizes up to 20 millimeters and 3 quarters of an inch. Now we can begin to work on the required length. This involves, firstly, measuring the depth or thickness of the cover at a screw mounting position, which, in this case, is 12 millimeters. As we will require a threaded depth of at least the screw diameter, 10 millimeters, we must include this too in our calculation. We therefore require a minimum length of 22 millimeters. In practice, we would select a stock length of 25 millimeters. If we were to measure the depth of the threaded hole, we will know the maximum length of screw that could be fitted. Here is another important fact. Never select a fastener that is too long, even by one or two millimeters, for a blind hole. And here's the reason why. If the end of the fastener contacts the bottom of the threaded hole before the fastener head has compressed the mating joint surfaces together, then the joint cannot be secure. 
any attempt to make the fastener tighter will usually result in a cracked casing or severely damaged threads as the pressure increases at the bottom of the drilling. As a general rule for blind hole fasteners, we should strive to obtain a length which permits one and a half times the shank diameter to enter the threads. Through holes or open tappings do not give us problems with bottoming. In such cases, the fastener length should again be at least one and a half times the thread diameter, but should not be so long as to protrude out of the opposite side. We have, in our demonstration, decided that we require 10 millimeters by 22 to 27 millimeter fasteners. In actual fact, we are more likely to obtain 25 millimeter fastener lengths in stock lengths, which of course is in range of our requirements. But we've not yet considered the type of fastener we need. Here, if we assume that we will be fitting hex screws, we're in for the problem of not being able to get a spanner in to secure it. So, what type of fastener would you suggest we use? Obviously, a cap screw or an Allen cap screw to be more accurate in description. See how a cap screw sits comfortably within the recessed area. We can now describe the fasteners we need for our demonstration model as being M10 by 25 Allen cap screws. After the break, we shall be discussing studs.